everybody, this is Erica with Look What's In My Hoop. It is October 28th, 2023. For those of you that are new here, welcome. Thank you for finding your way to my channel. I primarily talk about cross stitch and my journey along the way. And thank you to all of the returning subscribers who continue to um, share my journey with me. I'm very grateful that you're here. So today's episode, as usual, I have a lot to share. I want to show some of my fully finished objects that I've um, completed for the fall season in the past. I have some new finishes. I have some new fully finished objects. I think just one. Oh no, two. A lot of whips to go over and I have some shares today. So I am going to just dive right in. Okay, let's see. The first thing I wanted to show is a fully finished object I finished last year. This is a pretty popular piece, Lizzie Kate's Halloween Rules. And it was so nice to pull this out again this year. I just love having it up on my wall. And I don't know, it's just so nice when you <laughs> pull them out of the bin, you're like, oh, I remember that. I love that piece. Then I have, I think this is Bobby G's Witch's Night Out. I don't love the finish on this. Um, I actually wanna take this trim off, but I glued it down and I don't know if some of the glue spots will show. You know, I'm not great at finishing. This is one of the first ones that I had attempted to do and it did not come out great, but I like my stitching. So I thought about restitching the piece, except there's so many that I want to do that I don't know if I actually will. So we'll see. This uh, um, piece is the Drawn Thread Autumn. Autumn. I showed this last year. I had a bow up here last year though, and I decided I, I didn't like that particular bow. I may still put a little something up there. It was too big. So I do have some orange and white checked ribbon that's thin, so I might try to do something with that. But there's this. I love this one. I think I have the winter. There's one for each season. I'm pretty sure I have the winter pattern that I would like to do sometime. And I just set it on this um, like cookbook stand that I purchased from Hobby Lobby a while ago. But it makes a nice display piece. And then this stitch I did last year, but I did not finish it until this year. It is um, the Trilogy Tall Trio Boo. And I finished this last fall, but I put it in this frame. And the frame is from Signed and Numbered on Etsy. This came as a kit, so it had the charm, the threads, the fabric. It was really cute. I think I got four of these kits from eBay, and each kit cost me maybe $3. <laughs> I think it was 12 bucks I paid total. Maybe less, because I know I didn't pay more than that, and I don't know if there was shipping or not. So this is the first one I've stitched. There's a Christmas one, a patriotic one. Oh, a Thanksgiving one. I should start that this month, next month. But I love this frame because I can just set it on a shelf and I don't have to worry about it tipping over. It's really sturdy. And this was kind of an awkward size. It's two and a half inches by seven. I could not come up with a good finishing idea for it. So I said, you know what, let's just frame it. But I love it, it's so cute. So that was a fully finished object. And then my last finished piece um, is the Pumpkin Gardener from Mama Witch X-Stitch. I think I talked about her patterns before. I absolutely love them. I had a terrible time reading the pattern and I realized I struggled through 95% of this piece before I realized that I had printed it in black and white and this whip was a couple, or this piece was a couple years old or works in progress, so it took me a couple years. I printed it in black and white because my printer at the time used ink like crazy, so I was trying to conserve ink. 
Well, it dawned on me when I literally just had one little corner left that I could I have a new printer and it's much more efficient and I could have printed it in color, which makes the pattern much easier to read. So, you know, originally I thought I'm never stitching another one of her pieces again because as much as I love the patterns, it was a nightmare and I didn't enjoy it. So, I don't know, I just wasn't thinking, I guess. So I did print the last page so I could do that last little corner in color and it was like night and day, it was amazing. So I can't wait to start the next piece by her. But anyways, I showed this finish, um, I think in my last video, but I fully finished it for today. This little piece was from TJ Maxx last year on clearance after Christmas. And it had just had this foam piece in there with this really, actually it was kind of ugly. It was a truck with a tree in it or something, but it wasn't cute. But I thought that I would be able to fit this piece in there. I was just kind of eyeballing it. And it's close, you can see kind of over here, there wasn't enough room for these flowers. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. And I love it, I love this piece so much. She's like cute, but creepy <laughs> at the same time. And I think that's what appeals to me. I love it. I remember when I was stitching this, my mom said, oh, she's so ugly, she's so ugly, it's creepy. And then when I sent her a picture of the finished piece, she asked if it was for her house. <laughs> I told her, no, not this year, maybe next year. So I love that. Really cute. It's so nice to have these pieces out on display. Let's see, the um, this one's not fully finished, but I did finish it this month. This was the piece that I am working on with my friend Kim, my real life friend who is um, we've been friends since elementary school and she and I stitch one piece a year together and this was the piece that we did this year. It's Bent Creek, Let Us Be Thankful Row. I don't know what this fabric is because, I don't know, it did not have a tag on it. I'm not sure if it fell off or... <laughs> Sometimes they put the tag on a bag and then place the fabric in the bag and I may have tossed the bag, so I'm not sure, but I do know it's a 32 count. And then this is my, try to get to where it looks good. I was happy to have this one done. I don't think I will have it finished I'd like to have it finished, but I'm not sure if I want to frame it or, well, a couple of things I wanted to ask. When you use sticky board on your pieces, what do you do if your piece is longer than the sticky board and you have two pieces of sticky board that you need to use? Well, then you've always got that crack. Or do you not use sticky board for long pieces? I don't know, help me out. Should I use, I don't know, I was thinking I could mount this on sticky board and then put it on like a long um, charcuterie board or cutting board, you know, a narrow but longer one. And that would be kind of cute, but I don't know how to, what to put the stitch on to get it on the board. So if you have any thoughts or experience with what works best, let me know. And one of the, I was trying to use up stash when I uh, picked this pattern and I sent it to my friend and this is a beautiful piece of Lugana but you can see it's not modeled it's just a basic beige tan and I kind of want to add a little something to it so I know I've heard floss tubers in the past talk about this antiquing spray that they use you just spray it right on and it kind of gives it an antique look and I think it comes in a brown bottle, but I, for the life of me, cannot remember the name of it and what it's called. So if you have any idea what I'm talking about, please comment below and let me know. Or if you've had any problems using that, of course, I'd hate to ruin the stitching. And I, I would always try it on a little test piece of fabric first, but I kind of want to antique this up a little bit, but I don't know exactly what to do. Or maybe, I don't know, is it too late to put it in a coffee tea dye bath, which I've never done. So I'm a little hesitant to do that with, <laughs> with a piece I finished, but tell me your thoughts. How do I grunge this up a little bit? I don't want it crazy 
crazy antiqued, but just enough to give it a little more interest. But I'm happy to have that done. I would like to say I, I'll have this fully finished by November 1st, but that would be a lie. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to whips now, and I do have quite a stack. I have some new starts in here. They are not in any particular order. I have the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, the Christmas Wreath. Don't mind the watermark on here from a cub. This is a PDF download. I know it's still available. I started this a couple years ago and restarted it, restarted it again. I would love to get this done for this year, but I kind of lost my drive to finish it. I worked on it quite a bit in July and August, like a lot. I think I started it uh, Christmas in July. And then September hit, I didn't work on it. I barely put any stitches in this month. I don't know if I want to devote all my time in November to finishing it up, but this is how far I've been able to get. So, you know, I'm halfway done with the wreath portion. I'm over halfway done with the whole piece, and I love it. I'm stitching this on 32 count mint splash. This month I worked on Mrs. Claus here, part of this candy cane, like this little section. That's all I've done. I do think, so, you know, I don't know if anyone watched my last, or who watched my last video remembers, but I did start a new job, and it's going really well, and I feel so much better. Um, my other job was very physically, emotionally, and mentally draining. I was an ICU nurse, and I, I had done ICU for 10 years, plus <laughs> other years doing other kind of bedside nursing care. It is exhausting. I had to get out, so I took a manager position in our a nurse manager position in our interventional radiology department and I am working more hours it's your typical Monday through Friday and I am you know commuting more but I feel so much better I have energy like you wouldn't believe but it has definitely cut down on my stitching time which I don't love so in the morning I get up early so that I can get an hour maybe an hour and a half of stitching time in and then the evenings it varies whether or not I've got kids games or kids stuff going on I usually get some stitching in, but it might not be a ton. And I'm thinking that I might make this my morning stitch for the month of November. And if I don't get it done by December, I don't get it done, but I do love this and I really, I do want to finish it. And let's see, it uses all DMC threads. I know I've shown this before. So. Really cute, cute pattern. I keep it in this bag from Pam's Needle and Thread. I love how she quilts the back. They're very well made bags, so sturdy. I'm surprised I didn't put a little, I'll have to remember to do that. I know I have some Christmas zipper pulls to put on there. Really cute. <clears throat> These were just cardstock tags that I found at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago, and I just punched holes in them to make my own floss rings, floss drops. And then this little, I don't know, floss bling was from Sophia Violet Designs on Etsy. And I love that little vintage Santa. Really sweet. <clears throat> I'm gonna to try to keep this together so I don't have a mess. <laughs> I did work on a lot of things. You know, if I could just be a monogamous stitcher and focus on one thing, I wouldn't, I would really get stuff done. But I get bored, I think. I just want to move on to something. This was a birthday start. My birthday was September 30th, and I wanted to start the new pattern by Brenda Gervais when pumpkins glow. Love this so much. And I started it, I didn't like the fabric I was using, so I restarted it. <clears throat> I'm stitching this on 32 count hazelwood. Sorry for the hoop marks. 
And this pattern has a little bit of one over one stitching, like the little vines that come off of the stem here are one over one. I've never done that kind of stitching. So I'll do it, I'll just take my time. But I'm stitching, of course, two over two threads. So I'm assuming one over one, I'd, I would only use one thread and it would be okay. That's really cute. I'm not sure how much more I'll work on this one this season. I have a couple of um, older fall Halloween whips that I would like to focus my attention on so that they're not just lingering. <clears throat> but these are the threads for it. You know, my threads are always a mess. I am not one of those neat thread people. Who out there is a neat thread person and how do you do it? Because I am not. Once I start to pull the threads out, it gets wild. <laughs> it gets wild and I'm like, oh, I, just, I can't keep up with it. And then there's a couple DMC threads as well. And I am storing this in, oh, I wonder if this one, this might go in there too. I don't know why it's on a separate, why I don't have that on the ring, I don't know. Hope that one goes there, not to another project. <laughs> I am keeping this in, I don't know who made this bag. Oh, yes I do, Little Bow 88 on Etsy. I have a couple of her bags, they're really nice. And I have these, um, I put these charms on. I couldn't pick just one, that's why there's so many, which usually annoys me. I'm kind of a plain Jane, I like it. <laughs> Not so crazy, but I just loved all of these, so. Especially the skeleton one. Um, look at those kitty cats and the frogs. It's hysterical. <laughs> so I love that. We'll see. We'll see when I get them done. And I decided to pull out when I finished the Let Us Be Thankful because I really wanted to get that done. I decided to pull out a couple of my older whips, my Halloween whips, and I pulled out Buttons and Beads Autumn Series by Mill Hill called Midnight Farm. I love this. I mean, I love this one. I don't know why I don't work on it more. I did take the, I, if you've never done these kits, I've never done one, this is my first one, but it literally comes with everything you need. Um, the perforated paper, needles, the beading needles, the beads, the buttons, the thread, everything. And I love it, except I decided not to use the perforated paper. I'm not sure why. I have not stitched on perforated paper. This is the paper that it came with. I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of a, a blue, a blue gray. I'm not sure why I'm hanging on the paper because I'm not stitching on that. I am stitching it instead on 32 count slate or charcoal. Take that back, 32 count char charcoal Lugana. And I really just, I didn't do much. I kind of worked on the silo part of it a little bit. And it comes with this button little ghost button, adorable. And then these are all the beads. It comes exactly like this. I don't know how I'm going to figure out which beads are which, but I mean, they're different colors. I guess there's a way to do it. I don't know, I'll have to sit down and figure it out. But it gives you, and, and there's a lot. I don't think it needs all of these, so I think you get a few extra. So I did put a few stitches in that. Do you want to work on that more? You're going to see a little theme on, you know, here. I got to finish this. I got to finish this. <laughs> I also picked up my whip from last year, Halloween Cuties by Tiny Modernist. And these, these are shown in like little or individual ornaments. I'm stitching it in one long rectangular piece. But there's been a little bit of a hitch. Oh, where is that piece? 
Oh my goodness. Oh, I, I know I had it here. Where did it go? Uh-oh, guys. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I don't have it here. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm just going to ask you about it since I can't seem to find it. That is really strange. I was stitching that... Anyways, I was stitching it on a fabric, 32 count Lugana, two over two, and my stitches were puffy. They were not laying nicely at all. So then I decided to just flip the fabric around. I started in another corner and I was doing one over one. And it's a little bit sparse. <laughs> Can't win. It's like Goldilocks, you know, too much, too little. <laughs> so I want it just right. And I was wondering... It calls for all DMC threads, and you can see it's it's really not a ton of colors. There's a black, a yellow, a white, a couple of oranges. Maybe there's a green. I can't recall if there's a green. So, has anyone used that DMC Floche or Sulky? I don't know. Should I use Floche? Because I thought I saw other floss tubers talking about the Floche. And it's a little bit kind of thicker coverage, you know, just using one strand. Or should I go with Salky, which I've never used, but I could probably find a conversion for the DMC colors. And I think I've read or saw that it's one and a half times what a DMC is. So maybe that would be enough coverage. I don't know that I want to go buying both types of threads just to figure out for this piece. Um, but I am so bummed I don't have it here because the fabric is gorgeous. <gasps> I do have it. Oh my goodness. I'm losing it. Losing it. <laughs> it was literally right here to the left of me. And I'm looking over like all around for it like a maniac. Um, this was from To Die For Fabrics. I had ordered a piece of fabric and then she sent me this freebie. And it was a little surprise trick or treat. <laughs> And it was perfect. As soon as I saw, I knew, I'd already had that pattern. I knew that I wanted to use this fabric for that pattern because here, that blue color are actual stitches. But because this fabric came and it's so beautiful, I'm not going to stitch the blue. I'm just going to let the fabric show through. Um, this is pretty representative right here. This is a 32 count Lugana. So this is my two over two and it's okay, but it's a bit puffy for me. I don't like the puffy and my stitches are not neat. I'm a, a neater stitcher than that. And this is, I can't stand it. I cannot do two, two over two on this fabric. So I switched and pardon my little trailing thread. This is one over one and it's not quite enough. I need a happy medium, so help me out. Should I try Salky? Should I try the Floche? Or do you have a different suggestion? Please, please, please let me know. Because I really wanted to get this Scarecrow done before the end of October. I started, you know, I picked this back up over a week ago and I, I petered out pretty quickly because I don't know what to do. So you tell me. Please let me know. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing it today. I'm a little scattered. It's very early in the morning. I don't even think it's seven o'clock. But if I don't do this early, I don't know what's gonna happen with the day and I just wanna make sure I get this done. Okay, so my next few that I have are, um, I'm sorry, I have an itch. My next few are new starts. And you know, it's so funny. I get one done and I feel so good. I got it off the whip pile and then I start two or three more. How many of you are rowing the same boat as me? Just have a constant rotation of whips. I just started this this morning, actually. It is, oh, you know what? Let's not get into Christmas yet. Let's do my last fall piece. This was a new start this week, and I love it. I wanted to stitch, I'm going to be working on this throughout the month of November. It is the Primitive Hair Pumpkin Pie and a viewer 
had messaged me a, a couple of months ago. I, I want to say maybe August. Anyways, messaged me on Instagram and had mentioned this pattern. So we went back and forth a few times. And I don't want to say your name, but if I hope you're watching this. And if you are, send me a picture if, you're, if you've started this and, and where you're at. I would love to see it. Um, I just love this little pumpkin pie recipe. So cute. I'd never seen this pattern before. So I was very grateful that she brought it to my attention. I am stitching this on um, X Jou Designs fabric. It's a 36 count linen. Is it 36? Yes. 36 count linen called Farm Eggs. And I have it in the hoop still because I was just working on it, but <clears throat> this is my progress. Got the pump and part of the K. I love this fabric though because it reminds me of the top of pie crusts, kind of. And I just thought it'd be cute. So <clears throat> I'll work on this throughout November. Love that. And I love um, patterns that, you know, lettering seems to go pretty quickly. So hopefully, I say that, but you know how things go. Hopefully I can get this done for next year. Maybe I'll have it done in November, but I, don't, I definitely won't have it done to finish and display, sadly. <clears throat> and then I decided to, oh, let me show you this. Um, I am keeping it in this bag by Farmhouse Needleworks, which is another one of my favorite cross-stitch um, bag designers. It did not come with this scarecrow. It came with this little one, which is adorable. And it would have been perfectly fine, except I saw this. <laughs> I had to have that. I got that a couple months ago on Fat Quarter Shop. And that's the back of it. And the reason I love these bags is because it comes with the thread keep. And so these are the DMC colors and there's one fancy floss. So not a ton of colors, but how sweet, whoop, how sweet are these little bags? And it snaps. And it's substantial, like I, you know, you, you can't bend it easy, and I like that. So I keep it in that project bag. I just started this this morning. <laughs> I'm up at 4 almost every day, sometimes earlier, but usually by 4.30 I'm up almost every day. So I started this Lizzie Kate, Dear Santa, I've Been Good, number 187. This is really cute. So these are the called for threads. Oh, you know what? I'm missing the red. I think it's, oh, it is Louisiana hot sauce. I do have that. I'm not sure why I didn't put it on the uh, thread ring. I'll have to pull that out. But these are the other colors. I am stitching this on 32 count Hazelwood, which I normally save for fall and Halloween stitching because I, it's got like a little hint of green in it that I think is perfect for fall. But there was a piece that I had that did not have a super ton of modeling and I wanted to start this right away and it's just what I had. So you can see I just have the deer and part of the S. I would also love to have this done and finished by December, but <laughs> you can see I've got so many little whips I'm working on. Who knows what I'll pick? So I love that. That was a whim. I don't know why I decided to start that. I think because I have so many patterns and I'm like, oh, I could get this one done quick. Let me get it done and, and out of my pile, but you know. I have more patterns than I'm ever really going to be able to stitch anyways. Then I decided to start Sleigh Bell Ring by Cherry House Stitchery. I did, there's a couple of other pieces. Nicole Spore had done a sale for one of them. I 
forget the name of it, but I showed it on a couple of videos ago. And I did want to get this companion piece done for this year as well. So I decided to start this. And you can see the sleigh bells ring is in a dark brown color. I am going to stitch it in red. I also worked on this this morning. I started it and this is how far I've been able to get. You gotta love lettering. It goes quick, right? It's a little bit misleading because you think, oh, I can whip that out. <laughs> But it still takes time, so we'll see. And I think, hmm, I know this is a 32 count Lugana. I don't know the name of it. Should have wrote it down. This might also be Hazelwood. So that's that one. And the last whip that I've worked on is one that I started a while ago for my middle daughter, Tara, and then I have not worked on it in a while. I started it, didn't like the linen that I was using, restarted it, and then I just picked it up and decided to work on it a little bit more. Plum Street Stamp Samplers Corgi Caboodle. And... I am stitching this on 32 count Lugana Affogato. And I filled in a little more with the grass, the section, I filled the flowers in, and I started on the corgi. I was working on this in the mornings, and a few mornings ago, I came downstairs, I started stitching, and then I had to get ready for work. And the bag that I had the thread in, um, I have no idea where it went. I have torn, my living room, like my house is not that messy. I mean, I have kids, so, you know, there's little piles and stuff, but it's pretty organized and clean. And I cannot find out. I have no idea where that bag went. So I haven't worked on it the last few days. And that's how I ended up stitching the Lizzie K and the Cherry Hill Stitchery because <laughs> I couldn't find my Corgi Caboodle threads. But... Hopefully it will turn up because she is really excited about this and I want to finish it for her. So I love it that I'm, I've pulled out some of these old whips. It makes me feel good. <clears throat> oh, and I forgot to mention on the Cherry Hill Stitchery piece, when I stitched um, the piece for Nicole Spore Sale, I did use Color and Cotton threads. I had belonged to their thread club for a while See, these ones fell off. <laughs> when I tell you my threads are a mess, it's, it's real. <laughs> it's a struggle sometimes, but, cause I pulled them in the little tag tour, so then I had to write down the name so I didn't forget. But anyways, I am um, hoping I have enough thread cause I have one more piece that kind of goes with that group. So I'm hoping I have enough thread to finish, but we'll see. The thread is beautiful to stitch with, but I have a hard time with color and cotton. For some reason, I have trouble pulling out the threads off the tags and then they tear. I don't know, it's just me. Okay, now I want to get into haul and I do have a fair little bit of haul to show. I belong to the Be Stitch Me Fabric Club and I don't think I've been showing the pieces the last couple months because I always film towards the end of the month. Her fabrics ship at the end of the month and it seems like I never get them when I film the video. And so I'm filming today, but I got a notification that the fabric shipped. <laughs> so and this always happens. It comes a couple days after the video and then I put it away and I kind of forget to pull it out. So I don't have that fabric to show, but I did order the drawn thread and it's the Autumn Garden. Look at that, oh, gosh. I cannot wait to start this, and I'm thinking I'm going to start it in November. The reason is because I did order the silks that go with it. There's some, what are these called? Needlepoint silks, I've never stitched. Sorry for the glare, I don't wanna take these out because I, I don't have them on a ring. 
but I have never stitched with these needlepoint silks. So I'm really excited about that. Now it calls for this um, Water Lilies by Karen Silk. Never stitched with that. I wonder what this is, what this goes to. I think it's maybe one of those trees. I'm not sure. Oh, so pretty though. And it calls for dinky dyes, which I've talked about in the past. I don't know if I love dinky dyes, to be honest with you. But I'm going to just suck it up and stitch with them because I don't want to bother trying to convert to some other kind of silk. I don't know enough about silk, silk colors and to do, but there's some dinky dyes and silken colors from the Thread Gatherer. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm really excited about that. Now, I also purchased, I've been wanting to try, uh, what is it called? It's too early. I don't drink coffee in the morning, so, you know, forgive me. And I've talked about this before. When you start to record yourself, your mind literally goes blank and you cannot think of all the things. So, oh, applique, like wool applique I wanted to try. And I found this. I don't know, the thought just popped in my head a few weeks ago, like, oh, you should just go on Amazon and see what's available. And I know I've seen people post like buttermilk basins projects, and I always thought that they were really cute. But I've never done it. I didn't know that I wanted to pay $20, $25 for a book for something I might not be great at. But I've, I've thought about it for a while. And they had these books on Amazon. One was $6, one was like 7 or 8 They were marked way, way down. And I think I posted it on my Instagram, so hopefully people saw that and were able to, to uh, take advantage of the low price. But I saw this and I said, oh, I love that for Halloween. I want to do it. So I purchased this book and one of their ornament books, only because the price was so cheap. And then um, another really lovely viewer had sent me a message letting me know. I had asked on Instagram, like, where do I buy the wool? Blah, blah, blah. How do I do this? And she had very kindly sent me a whole list of places that she shops from to get her wool. So I really need to sit down and order and start a project. I might not start the kitty one right away. You know, we're getting to the Christmas season. I might try one of these. I don't know. They're so cute. We'll see. I'm gonna try it and we'll see. I also purchased, this is new. I may have got this a couple months ago and didn't show it, the Cricut Collection. Rest and be thankful. I saw uh, somebody stitch this and they showed their finished project on their floss tube. And I can't remember her name, but it was beautiful. And so I definitely want to stitch this. Then, you know, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine came out. I started seeing posts and people talking about it. But when I saw this turkey, oh my gosh. I just love everything about him. He is so stinking cute. I love it. I don't buy, I'm, I'm not subscribed to them. I don't buy every season's catalog. I have a handful and I haven't stitched, stitched one single thing from them, even though I love them. But um, I like to collect patterns and books. So here we are. I also loved this one. Although I don't like the color of the house, I would have to change that. But I love the owl up there and the crows. It's just cute. But then I definitely want to stitch this one and put it around a spool. And I don't think that one would, would take too long. It wouldn't be too, too crazy. So this is available now if anyone's interested. I don't know if I showed this, but I am planning on starting this one on January 1st. A sampler for all seasons. Oh, can we do a sale? Has anyone done a sale for this yet? I don't know. I know this was at like some kind of retreat and... 
you couldn't get it and then they just released it this fall and now it's available. So the Scarlet House, a sampler for all seasons. If anyone is interested in starting a sale or um, participating in a sale in the new year, please comment below. If I get enough people interested, I will think of a hashtag and we'll get the ball rolling um, for the video in November. And then this gives people a couple months to get the supplies together. I don't have uh, fabric, I don't have thread, I just have the pattern, so let me know. It says, when the weather is hot, rainy or cold, I look at my chart and stitch as I'm told. The wind may howl, raindrops may fall, I'm in my own world and safe from it all. With colors of thread from every hue, it makes me happy, this much is true. Let's do a sale. But I need to know people are interested. <laughs> I don't have a ton of viewers, so I don't know. I only need one. I only need one person who wants to do a sale with me. So let me know if you want to be that person. We'll do it. This is going to be my New Year's, my New Year's start. Now, I purchased this Ink Circle, Ink Circles Assembly Required. I think this is a new pattern. And I love this one so much because it reminds me of, you know, I um, I've taken several anatomy and physiology courses throughout my, my nursing career for different degrees. And my first anatomy and physiology class, our instructor, he had a partner, a lab partner, handed us a box full of bones. They weren't real bones. We had to put together the entire human body. 206 bones, I think, is what is in the human body. <laughs> Uh, it took us a while, but we we did it. And so this just reminds me of that. And plus, I think it's cute for Halloween. So um, maybe next year I'll start this one. I've never, I have a couple ink circles patterns, but I've never actually stitched them. So that would be fun. And then my last piece of haul is this Teresa Koga, Koga, how do you say her name? Teresa Kova book, Harvest Friendship. And I loved it because of, it's very shiny, so I'm sorry for the glare, but I loved it because of this piece on the front. I love the border. I love the little pumpkin friends. I don't love this saying though. Um, I'm a little picky with sayings sometimes. This one I don't love. So I will still stitch this, but I either have to come up with another saying or come up with something else in there. But um, this has some really, I think there's three patterns. You know, and if you've never bought one of her books, the art in there is amazing. She's so talented. You know. Here is a Biscornio. And then there's one more pattern. Oh, so this is the Biscornio. That's a better photo. And then there's a Harvest Friendship Drum. And some more artwork. Oh, look at those turkeys. So I got that and then I ordered another book by her that I just saw in somebody's floss tube. And I can't think of the name of it. I'm definitely going to show it in my next video, but it has a cute little pumpkin boy and a pumpkin girl in it. And it kind of reminds me of those patterns by, I think it's the Good House Housewife, the Ira Ray, or Ida Ray, and, oh God, Ida and Ira. Ida May, Ira Ray, I think are the name, names of the patterns. It's the crows, and I love crows, so I wanna stitch all the crows. And I have searched and searched. You can't get these patterns. Um, I've checked eBay. I don't know. It's just not in print anymore. I would love to get my hands on a, a copy of them. But it kind of reminded me of that. It was, it was cute. But it wasn't crows. It was pumpkins. So I want to say it was Autumn Blessings book. But don't quote me. I'm not sure. But I'll definitely show that in my next video because that's another one that I want to start. Really cute. Okay. So 45 minutes in. 
and I want to get to the shares because I have a few. And the first thing that I want to give away is Buttermilk Basin's Vintage Vibe. I brought, I bought a second copy to give away to a viewer. If you are into wool applique, this book is for you. Um, I'll just kind of show you a couple of the things in here. Oh, look at this cute little Santa or snowman. <laughs> It's a little scary there actually though um let's see what else could i show oh there's an owl to go with that cat and it's not all all stuff look at these sweet little birds so cute so anywho i want to give this away so if you are interested in this book just put the word vintage and I will draw a winner before my next video. This was a piece that I UFO'd. It's pretty popular, Plum Street Samplers. This is the day. I don't have the plastic case for it. I will put it in a Ziploc bag, but the pattern is, is new. I just made a working copy for myself, which I've already gotten rid of because I'm not stitching it. But if you would like to stitch this piece, just put the word day. Next, I have Plum Street Samplers Cardinal Ken, brand new copy. I, I was thinking of doing this. It was pretty popular last year, but there's so many other things I'd rather stitch. So just put the word cardinal. Right here. Oh, <laughs> my cat is in the window. She likes to go outside, but she's probably had enough. It's a little chilly here this morning. So I have to let her in. Um, I also had belonged. I tried to give this away before. Somebody won, never, you know, never got back to me. So I want to give this away again. It's from Stitch and Annie's. It was part of their uh, It's Freezing Season Ornament Club. I did get the first three patterns. And then decided it's not something I want to stitch. So I want to give away all three patterns so that you guys could Whoever wins can have a little grouping of ornaments or pillows or whatever. And then I'm giving it away with this um, fabric. It's it's not the called for. You don't obviously have to use it for that pattern, but I will not use this. I'm hoping if I pass it along, someone might. It's a uh, Zweigar, and it's kind of a gray. Looking at it, it looks like it might be a 28. It's either a 28 or a 32. So I do want to give that away. So all you have to do is put the word snowball to win this. Please be over 18. Please be a U.S. resident um, over 18 so I can ask for your address. Um, please be a U.S. resident. And if you like, you know, like these videos, please consider subscribing. I would love that as well. And I think that is all that I have for today's video. So I will be back in November. I'll definitely have more whips to share and probably some haul goodies. Um, it's getting close to the holiday season, so I probably will switch over to Christmas stitching, winter stitching. I do have some, I have one Christmas whip that I started last year and I made really good progress. And I do want to work on that some more and I want to get that Christmas wreath pillow completed. If I could, I don't know. Oh, I don't know, I sometimes think about, oh, someday I'll retire and I'll have more time to stitch and <laughs> I will. I mean, when you're retired, you should have more time to stitch, right? So someday, but it's, it's a ways off yet, so I can't think about it. <laughs> Anyways. I hope everyone um, enjoys the rest of their October. I'll see you in November and happy stitching.